uh, we saw how those waveforms look um, with the ISOV Pro on the MMCX connectors, right? So that's the ideal scenario. Uh, one of the things I've seen people done, and you know, this is not as common for VGS measurement, but people use this uh, differential probes for VDS measurements. What I have here is a, a, a TMDP uh, 200. This is a 200 megahertz probe, so it's not a slouch by any measure. Uh, really, really good probe, but I just want to show you how this compares with a setup like this, right? Uh, to make a measurement similar, right? So we'll, we'll look at the VGS measurement, just see uh, what it does to a measurement and see how it looks, okay? So give me a second, uh, I'll plug this in, we'll disk it and then we'll get rolling, all right. All right, so what I did was uh, I got this probe and I got it connected to our uh, VGS connections on the square pin side, right? Now, the pins are too big, so I couldn't fit them on the pins, but that's okay, you know, uh, we'll, we'll get the crux of it, right? I, I wound the cables and all that stuff, and this is something we use all the time to make high frequency measurements. And I just want to, uh, to show you how the measurements actually uh, change quite a bit when you have setups like this, right? With long leads and uh, just in general, you know, the ground loops and so on, right? So let's turn this on and see what happens. There we go, all right. So remember how we saw, um, oops, sorry. Remember how we saw the VGS measurement? So the blue signal is the VGS we are measuring on the MMCX side of things with ISOV Pro, TIVM, and the orange signal is the signal, the VGS signal, the same VGS signal on the square pin side with the TMDP 200, right? So 200 megahertz probe. And see the difference on both those measurements, right? So if I, if I zoom in and I'll change the positions a little bit, take a look at that. So obviously you don't see the gate measurement, but you see a lot of artifacts that are just not there in the real measurements. So that's how it should look. We just don't see it, right? So that's that's the problem with using differential, especially at lower bandwidth. It just slows the signal down. It works as a low-pass filter, right? Um, just look at this, right? The, even the amount of ringing on the turn-off side is just crazy. It's not real, right? The problem is if you use the system to measure it, you'll have to fix for this, and it's not even there, right? So it's a, it's a measurement system problem, which uh, should not be ignored, right? So as you can see, all this ringing is not real, right? Uh, I'll show you another example with the same setup, right? So we'll, we'll replace this guy and keep the leads that I have right here, the long leads, and see how ISO view does with long leads, right? So that is the next setup. We'll all right. So in this new setup, what I've done is uh, I, I took off the, the differential probes, right? And what we'll do is we'll, we'll bring this ISO view probe to this side and see how this lead length affects the measurement, right? And what I'm trying to replicate with this is uh, a setup where, you know, we are used to soldering the cables directly to the board, right? And a lot of us do this, right? So that we can get really tight connections, right? It won't be this long, but it'll get the get the crux of it, right? So we are using this square pin adapter that comes with ISO view. So you can use the MMCX uh, tips that you have directly with this, right? So we'll, we'll save this measurement. We'll move this probe here and compare it with its own reference, okay? So let's save this measurement. Uh, in the file, so, oops, waveform, and we'll call it one, two, three, four is fine, right? And we'll call and recall that measurement again. So right here, we are looking at five and recall, right? So there she is, right? So you can actually see the measurement in white, uh, and the blue measurement is now going to be the new signal, right? So I'm going to switch that probe to the new place, and let's see what the measurement looks like now. All right, there we see, right? So the blue one is the one with the leads. Let me change the trigger just a little bit so it, it stays kind of stable, right? So you can see it, it kind of matches the measurement. It's much nicer than the differential probe, right? Because it has that cable. But look at the ringing that is added just by adding this cable right here, right? So in your mind, think about this as the, the ring cables you use or the solders you put on the board or even square pins and stuff like that. So anything you add to the system that takes away from that shielding, is going to add problems, right? And you will be fixing for this ringing because you do not know if this ringing is real or not, right? And the worst part is if I move it, I can change it, right? So you can dial a number and you can get exactly what you want from it, right? Which is not a good thing, All right? So uh, that's one. Now I, what I'll do is next, we'll remove this cable and just see what square pin does to this whole measurement, right? So we'll keep the, the white reference right there and we'll just remove this cable. I removed the, the lead from the connection and we went directly with our ISO view on the pins, on the square pin with the adapter, right? And what we want to see is how does adding an adapter and a square pin affect your measurement, right? So we already have this as a reference from the MMCX side. 
um, that is as ideal as we can get and let us see what the adapter does to or square pin does to the measurement right. So, let us turn this on and take a look at that right. So, do you see that right there? I will move this so it is a little easier to see uh, right there okay and then we will move this guy a little bit take a look at that right. So, see all this ringing right and which is obviously not here right everything else kind of matches but you see this ringing and that is really an artifact that the square pin and the adapter adds right. So, the common mode rejection actually degrades if you start adding stuff to it and the point is when you design these boards especially if you are doing very very high speed GAN you really have to think about your connection points even with the best equipment possible you will still see issues like this and the problem is you would not have other reference designs to test again right. So, this will be your golden design and you will try to fix this problem for months without knowing that it is just a measurement issue which you could have solved anyways right. So, to summarize I just want to say you know uh, whenever you are working on GAN or very very fast switching try and use a connector like this which is nice and shielded really tight layouts right. You start adding stuff to your layouts and measurement systems it just degrades the measurements really really badly right and you can see that right here even with the really really good products you would not be able to make those measurements if you do not do good layouts and good measurement practices right. So, we will we'll stop this section as this and let us go look at the current now.